Aliza Tuachi, thanks for being on Fitness and Consciousness. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you might need to speak up just a little bit, but I think it'll be good. So um, you are a biodynamic psychotherapist. I think that's a, a good way to start with, like, what is that and, and what do you do with that? Well, it's psychology, but we work more, we focus a lot on the body, body work. I don't know if you ever heard of Wilhelm Reich. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So he's one of the founders of this whole corporal psychotherapy. It's not so big in the United States. It's much more big in Europe and other places in the world. Here in Mexico, it's a lot. There's a lot of it too. But it's what he realized was that the emotions doesn't only, it doesn't only stay in the mind. It goes more into the body, the muscles. So we work, if we want someone to really change, because how many people talk and talk and talk about their problems and it just stays in their head. So what we do is really try to work on that body-mind connection. So that person could really feel and unfreeze those emotions that maybe were there since they were three years old. And that way you release them and that way you have a change in your life for a better part. Also, so I had a lot of symbolic and like some of the massages from her name was Jared Boyson. I don't know if you heard of her either, but it's like it's that's quite biodynamic. It has a lot of combination of a lot of type of places. So what would it what else? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So like, what would it uh, look like then? So if you're talking about something from three years old and so like some kind of, you're talking about like some kind of trauma happens or something like that. And this is something that manifests in relationships later on. And then, so you're trying to uh, release that. Is that what you're saying? Well, According to all this, is that we'll, we are all, all the human beings, we're all new, new, neurotic. That's the word, right? It means that from zero to seven years old, we all had a traumatic experience. And I don't think there's a person that has no exception in the world that they had a small traumatic experience with their parents. According to that, it depends what age, what it was, what circumstance it was, it creates their whole character and their whole being. And that way, also, their whole, their whole body develops. So what I do is also I read bodies. So you can see a person just by the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they move. You can see exactly what's their defense, their defense me mechanism. And you can also see what is their biggest fears. And that way, you can, like, you can see their patterns in life just by looking at their body, by, by the way they walk, by the way they talk. So what we try to do here, what I do is that I work with that person according to their character. Not everybody's going to react the same way according to their character. So like if you had a traumatic experience of, let's say, I don't know, you mean, maybe you had um, very a very strict parent, very rigid, very... <laughs> very strict, you're going to develop and it's showing your body. And that way you're going to take it on to your relationships to the rest of your life. Unless we work on that and we, we have to, what we have to do is our, our mind freezes in that stage. So you can say, look, I'm 30 years old. I'm an adult, but really, really you're acting like a 33 year old child because your mind's stuck in that three year old child pattern of fear of abandonment or whatever so that way you're always like looking and attracting because everything's energy so you're attracting those situations in life that are affirming and confirming they're confirming your belief system that you created when you're a three-year-old child that's that's why it's the law of attraction we attract what we believe but we're carrying on these beliefs that also maybe sometimes it's not things that we went through but sometimes it's also belief systems that we're carrying on from our parents too it's like it's very com complex it's very interesting <laughs> yeah i've studied a little bit of that and uh 
like what I've found like through, uh, like say my last like main uh, girlfriend, for instance, and we've talked uh, publicly about stuff before. So I'm not like uh, releasing too much that's, that she wouldn't approve of, but she had had some traumas from uh, childhood, like sexual stuff. And then uh, later on, she's picking like um, guys that cheated on her. She had like a, a husband that cheated on her. And then uh, like she's with, then she's uh, with me and I'm like, I, I've never cheated on anyone. And I'm like, if I'm interested in someone, I'll just say it. And then like, if we're going to like, if we're on date number one, if there's going to be a date number two, I'm not going to see anybody else in between. And I know it might be kind of like weird for some people, but, and if like the, the woman is interested in somebody else, if she's going to go out with somebody else besides me between date number one and date number two, then I'm not really interested. It's like, I'm not like possessive or anything. So if we have date number two, it doesn't mean we're getting married and this whole thing. But it's like, if this is, if we're both interested and we're seeing where it goes, you know, then why mess it up with something else? So we were together and that happened. Um, and then, so like we ended up breaking up and we still uh, talk sometimes, but then like she ends up with someone else that's more like, uh, uh, he seems like more like uh, wishy-washy, like, like maybe so, maybe not. He's like unsure. He's like, like back and forth. And I, I see like this pattern of like uh, a lot of women, I think will, they'll, they'll keep going back to these things. Like instead of having like the guy that's unsure and that's, is almost is more attractive for some reason than the guy that's just like more simple. And like, do you think that like so are they, are do you think these like women? I mean, maybe not her in, in this case, but or maybe so. But do you think that they're like picking these guys because they're like stuck in these old patterns and they almost prefer something that's uh, hectic and sad and like how do you how do you 100%. see that? that's 100 percent. it's something like called addicted addiction to frustration it's like we're all addicted to these like situations that just we know that's going to give us frustration and this and that but it just gives us a sense that a lot of times what happens with like if you want to connect it to the childhood is that we link pain with love so we feel like if there's no pain there's no love because the people who give us the most love and love us the most, which is our caregivers, are the ones that are the first ones to cause us pain. And it's not because they're bad parents. It's because there's no way a person, a human possible in way that can give you 100% your needs. Like what? Even if you're holding your child, your two-year-old child, and you turn around for two seconds because you're looking at your cell phone, and now and day we're in this whole <laughs> time of cell phones and this and that, it's like very hard. A lot of bad issues now. Well, it's not because you want to cause pain to the child. The child's going to feel pain. And, you're, and even if you're the most perfect parent in the world, the child is also going to feel pain because he's going to say, I'm never going to be able to keep up with my parents' expectations. They're too perfect. I'm not perfect at all. So there's always, we always link that pain to love. What we have to, as adults, break that pattern and realize that pain is not love. Pain is not love, but we keep looking for pain because we think in our subconscious mind that pain is love. So yeah, also, if you're thinking like, let's say if your girlfriend that's always attracting the situation, also probably has to do with that situation that maybe, she, I don't know how her relationship is with her father, but usually it, it does have to do with, or she has such a good relationship with her father, she's going to attract guys that she doesn't want to be committed to because even if you say that they're wishy-washy and they're not committed, maybe the really want, the reason is that she's attracted to those guys is because she's the one that doesn't want to be committed. Deep down inside. All this, remember, that we only use our 5% of our conscious brain and the 95% of our brain that really controls all our decisions and all those types of things. That's where it all belongs. 
That's why it's so important to meditate. Because when we meditate, what we do is we open up that door. We open up that little door. And then we go in and we can really see these patterns that, and our, these beliefs and all these things that are really the motor that really controls our lives. And in that moment, instead of becoming a victim to all the story that you created in your subconscious mind, you start, became, you start seeing the things as they are, and you start becoming the creator of your life. You start saying, oh, look, I'm attracting these guys because I'm addicted to pain. But guess what? I don't have to be addicted to pain anymore. I can know that love is love and pain is pain. I can separate it. And then once you realize that you, you start living in that way and you start you can choose, you start choosing your life. And then that way you start even manifesting and attracting what you really want, but you know exactly what you want. But so like, maybe you don't want to commit a relationship. Just admit it. I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I, I'm too, guess what? I'm too scared. I'm too afraid for a committed relationship because I'm, I'm scared of the, the close, deep relationship and that contact. That's why I attract all these guys. It's fine. Everything is fine. But at least be conscious about it. And stop blaming it on all the guys that I attract in my life. Whenever me, me personally, I attract like certain toxic situations in my life, I do have to turn around and to myself and look at myself and say, guess what? Why am I attracting this, this situation in my life? And, and then you start realizing that even if it's, let's say it's, if it's in a group of friends or if it's in a relationship or whatever it is, you do start realizing that's a pattern that you are creating or attracting because everything's energy you start creating and attracting it so and so we don't don't really do the healing work and we really do this inner healing work that we're supposed to do because that's like that's like one of the biggest pleasures in your life that you can ever receive is get, get going in and connecting to your true source like there's no greatest pleasure like they even did, did these studies that they had there's like these studies that there even the any any sexual food any pleasures there's no comparing to the pleasure that you get when you meditate and you reach that high that you reach that connection to soul to your soul level unless you once you master that meditation process and all that and connection to your inner soul even if you're eating or doing whatever you're doing or you're having intercourse whatever you're doing if you, once you're connected you could already, you could get that high because when you're in that meditative state, you bring that state to whatever you're doing, whatever action. That's like mindfulness, no? So yeah, I, mean, I that that's I hope we see that really our relationships is not only the fault of other people. It, it does have to do with our own responsibility of why are we attracting these things in our life? Because what am I trying to prove to myself? No. Why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That it, it makes sense to me, and it's. It's like, like in the case of, of her, it was like she was recognizing this stuff. And then I had this other girl she, that I was seeing. And I don't, I don't date a bunch of different women, but uh, I just like to give real examples because that's, you know, what I real. know. It's real, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, she was kind of doing the, the same thing. But, like, the, like, we met years ago, uh, but her, like – she was really good friends with my girlfriend from several years ago. And that's how I met her. But then um, we, well, long, long story short, like we started to see each other. Like I went to her yoga class and then she sends me a message asking me how I liked it. And then we met for dinner. And then like that day she was like, um, we found out that we were both interested in each other from a long time ago, like when she was, when I was with my girlfriend that was her friend, but neither one of us said anything. We didn't say anything, do anything. We didn't in any way let the other person know that we were attracted. And so then we found out that that day that we both were. And then, so she's like the one that uh, like makes the first move and says something and says that she wants like definitely a monogamous relationship. Definitely. Like, here we are, we're doing this thing. And it was like the, the first day that we hung out, like went to dinner and then we were just hanging out for a little while afterwards. And then, so it's like, oh, this really cool thing is happening. And then it like, it drops off. And then it's almost like she acts like I'm crazy for remembering what she said the day before. And then, so it was like kind of this, uh, like back and forth sort of thing, like just friends. And then 
like we met for uh, dinner, I let her borrow, like I have these shaman stones and uh, these, these Moki shaman stones. I don't know if you're familiar with them. I don't, I don't want to like uh, digress too much. They're sitting right there. But um, anyways, I let her borrow them and I was getting them back. Well, at, at that time, I kind of had this uh, friends with benefits sort of relationship with my ex. And so I go and I meet this, the friend of mine out to dinner, out for dinner to get my stones back. And we were just friends. And then, so she was like saying something, I was getting the hint that she was thinking that it was almost like a date kind of. And then she asked me about uh, my ex and I was like, I told her the complete truth. I was like, yeah, we kind of just like see each other, but we kind of have the deal if, if either one of us starts seeing somebody else, then it's over. Like there's no, uh, which I, I, I've never even really had that kind of relationship before. I don't really like that, but it was happening. So she starts crying and leaves me at, at, at the dinner. I'm like, so then, but then when I'm talking to her, she acts like she wasn't really even interested in me at that time that we're just friends. And like, how does that make sense if you have this reaction? And then, but at that night we were, but oh, anyways, we were, so we were talking at, at the dinner, like before she, she left me there and she was talking about like the last guy that she was seeing for a while. And I was like thinking of the story of like her, her earlier trauma and about like her dad and stuff. And, and I was, you know, like when you're on the outside looking in, uh, you can see it so easily when somebody is doing this stuff, but they can't see it. And so I was just about to say, like, do you think it has anything to do with, you know, the relationship with your dad that you, you keep going out with these guys that end up being uh, ab abusive? Oh, yeah. oh, and, yeah. and, uh, and then she, uh, she like stops me before I get it out and says, oh, stop. She's like, I already know what you're going to say. I'll give you 70% credit. But I just made the connection that it has to do with my dad. And then it's like, okay, so we can all be like aware of this stuff, but our actions keep like acting like we're, we're not aware of it. Exactly. That's exactly what we were saying before in the earlier. I was saying that sometimes we can know in our mind, but if we don't bring it down to the body, the changes, we're not going to really change. That's why we could also meditate all we want and, and live in our mind, but we have to bring it down to our body. And what does it mean that bringing it down to our body? It's kind of hard because what you really have to do is feel. And I think that's what most of the people don't want to do is they don't want to feel the pain that they have been keeping in their body stored for so long. You know? That's what really causes later on diseases because what happens is a disease, it becomes a disease when it's like just stored in the body for so long, then it eventually becomes a disease. So that's what it is. It's it's not, we're not at ease in our body. So exactly, you want a person to really change, they really have to do some body work, make it conscious. So what I really do, like let's say with my patients or whatever, my students, let's say we want to touch rage, we have to, I get a bunch of, we have to do a lot of body works of hitting and screaming and kicking and getting it out and making tantrums that you weren't able to make when you were like a three-year-old and after that the thing is like you could say ah eh, what is that you start seeing changes in the person and the person and being out the thing is that we get stuck we get stuck and what we're trying to say like, instead of getting stuck we're trying to make sure that we complete the whole process it's like a process first there's a charge of energy, okay? A lot of people get stuck here. Then it starts uh, generating. It has to be, it ha there has to be, once it starts getting more charge, 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 there has to be a release. If there's no, no release of that energy, one second. If there's no release of that energy, um, sorry. if there's no release, that means that we just keep it in. And then after the release comes the relaxation. That's when a person can re really be calm and relaxed. But we live in anxiety totally because we don't know how to do that complete whole process. 
that whole process. And th those processes and those cycles are in our whole life. Those processes are, let's say, in relationships and everything. There's nothing eternal. Nothing lasts forever. Do you agree with me or no? Yeah. There's nothing that ever is gonna last forever. So you have to always live present, say, okay, now I'm in this relationship. You don't know if it's, you're gonna be in that relationship tomorrow. Live it, feel it, be it. We don't wanna feel, we don't wanna feel the pain. We don't wanna be, we don't wanna, hmm. we're afraid to feel. That's the, like, that's the whole problem in the whole world. Nobody wants to feel anything. We just wanna feel joy, but you know what? If you don't feel pain, if you don't feel sadness, you can't feel joy either. It's the it's a door. If you open up the door, you're going to feel everything, all the emotions. If you don't open up the door, you can't choose. You can't be picky. One second. Can we, can we just put pause for a second? Sure. Second. Okay. We're back on. Sorry. So uh, you're talking about uh, feeling it and bringing the, what we know down to our body and our actions. Exactly. That's the whole body-mind connection. So like what, um, yeah, this is really interesting. These patterns and the, that we get into and then I start like looking at my, my own patterns. And I'd be curious to see what you have to say about that. Like if there's some, cause I'm sure there's things just like I can see in like these women that pick these guys, it's, it's clearly doesn't make sense, <laughs> but what's that? You also choose these women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what's, what's my problem? And That's so, uh, like in another thing, like one pattern that I had, and it's, it's only showed up a couple of times, I guess, if that, if that still makes a pattern, but there was, uh, like the friend of mine that, uh, like she was like more than a friend for a while and then left me at the, at the dinner when she found out I was still seeing my ex sometimes. Um, like we were meeting, like I was, we were, hanging out like about like once a week or something like that. I would usually get like carry out and then take it to her place. Or sometimes we'd meet some, uh, some restaurant and I was, I was paying for it every time except for once I was helping her move. And so she's like, okay, you pick up some Thai food and then I'll, I'll, I'll give you the money when you get here. And so we did that. So there was like one time out of a whole bunch of times where uh, that she paid and I, I was paying every other time. And then I thought, okay, I don't want to keep this, this pattern up of just like, I'm paying for everything. Why should I have to pay for everything? And so I, I sent her a message. that was like, I would, I was trying to like be funny. So I cracked a couple like little dumb jokes. Cause I, I didn't want her to think I was mad or, but I was like, I, it would be nice if you would reciprocate. You know, I, I don't want to pay for every, every time. It's like, it doesn't have to be even, even, you know, I'm not going to keep track to the dollar or anything like that. But, uh, I was like, could we like start s switching every other time or something like that? And there's usually a part in a relationship, like with, you know, like my uh, last girlfriend where, okay, I think it just makes sense for the guy to pay for the first time, the second time. And then somewhere not too long after that i it's nice if the woman says okay let me get it this time without anybody without there being a discussion about it just like we're out, out to dinner the bill comes and then the woman says this time is on me and then i think that's okay like okay because but the first couple times i think the guy should pay definitely the first time but then you i, I would expect like after a while it starts to even out after uh, it starts to be somewhat even where you don't, we're not keeping track of dollars and cents. But there were like these two, uh, in particular women that I was talking about where it was like, it's always me paying. And then like, I'm paying for the concert tickets. I'm paying for the, and it's like, you know, they might do a little something every now and then, but I wanted to like stop this pattern. And so when I sent her the message, her response was, unpleasant to uh, to say the least and she was like you maybe she said like you maybe get us carry out once every other month I'm like what it's almost every week and she's like well maybe every other week I'm like okay it might be two or three weeks in a row and then not for a week or two a week and 
you know, so it's not like every single week. Uh, and then she, it was just like this weird thing. And then she didn't talk to me for a little while, like no response for like 10 days. And we were talking about like doing some like business stuff together also. And so like I sent her a message about like business stuff and she didn't answer me. I'm like, okay, then that's done. I'm not playing this. So what do you think that like that's about like when as somebody that deals with this stuff for a living and this is your specialty, like what do you get from that? Like what do you see that's like, what am I doing or like, what are they doing? Or just like, what's your take on that whole situation? Well, I can tell you a million things, but <laughs> I think that when a lot of people, if you're not clear from the beginning, you have to always be clear from the beginning. There's always going to be, especially in subjects of money or the three subjects that are always going to be a trigger is money, power, and sex. Always. So if you're not clear from the beginning, you can't get really weird that she got weird or upset because you have your ideas, she has her ideas. The thing is, a lot of people, they think, we think automatically is like, oh, I'm gonna give, 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 because eventually she's gonna give me back. But guess what? No, you can't have any expe expectations at all. You have to release that totally. And if you want your relationship to be 50-50 from the beginning, you can't wait, you can't, like say, oh, I think the guy has to pay the first, 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 all these meals in the beginning, and then she'll pay. No, you're you're showing from the beginning, from the beginning, you're showing that you're 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 saying I'm paying. I'll take care of this. It's fine, but you have to be aware of the message you're giving. I think, because if not, you could just speak about it from the beginning, and that way, whenever we speak about the things from the beginning, there's not going to be that miscommunication. And well, yeah, she got upset and you have to say, okay, you want to continue with that or not? You have to deal with the consequences. You have to give, see, see the options. What are, what are you willing to risk? Always when we speak our truth, there's always like these risks, no? One, that she'll honor what you want. Or if you don't speak your truth, who you, you're betraying yourself. Yeah. You can't, but you can't control what's her, what going to be her reaction. At least you're honest with yourself, no? Yeah. Yeah, and I did a, a show by myself earlier today that was kind of like that. I called it the, the gambler because when I'm playing that card, okay, now I'm going to tell her I'm, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. What's going to happen? And there's like this certain risk that comes along with that. But so I, so I get on this subject. It's like, so from the beginning, like if a guy, are you married or are you single or like what's your? Me, yeah, I'm married. I have four kids. Okay. And how long have you been married? 11 years. Okay. So like at the, at the beginning or like in general, like your friends that maybe are, are not married, like what's the, the thing to do? Like when, when you, when a guy asked them out or like when your husband first started to, was asking you out, like, and what if like the bill comes and he's like, okay, your part is uh 1272. Like, wouldn't you think like, what, what are you talking about? 1272. Like you're, well, I think it depends the country a lot. I think it has to do a lot with where you live, the country. Like Mexico is like such a big macho place that the guy's gonna wanna take care of everything. <laughs> so it's kind of normal that the guy gets the bill here, around here. Like throughout? But, uh, like the guy is expected to pay, like for the, the whole time? Look, the girl could pay, if it's fine. If she wants to pay, like, yeah, but she's the one that has to offer. Usually, hmm. not the guy that pays. But not usually, yeah. Hmm. I think there's no law. It depends the age. Me, when I, when, I, well, when, I, when I was going out with my husband and this and that, well, I was a teenager. So I got married when I was like 18. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, he got all the bills. Then <laughs> I didn't have any income then. But, yeah. But but yeah i get what you're saying and i say that if you want it to be like that sorry <laughs> if you want it to be fair from the beginning you have to put the rules from the beginning just like you said from the beginning like you said a little while ago you said i want well, like this girl said she said i want a monogamous relationship the same thing you have to say i want this relationship to be 50 50 and bills and everything and it's fine if she accepts 
great. That means she really want, like she want. That means she, she she also also when I feel like when the woman like she also supports a lot in the household and she brings the income. It makes the marriage much stronger too. So it's it's or or whatever the relationship. So it, it is um it has the benefits for her too to be paying fifty fifty the bill. But you have to put it from the beginning. But yeah. Yeah, I guess like with with most of the time it's just been like it just makes sense like like fifty fifty. I don't want her to open the door for me half the time and I open the door for her half the time. No, it's like you I would open the door for the woman. That's just like I guess that's just how my mom taught me. My mom walks up to the door and then a man opens the door. Maybe I'm the man, maybe my stepdad is the man, but it's, it's, it's just kind of like, it's just what I do. So I don't expect a, a woman I'm seeing that's like open my car door for me half the time and open my, open the door to the restaurant half the time and this kind of thing. <clears throat> so it's not like, but like with the other relationships, it was just like, okay, I pay for the first time, the second time. And then there was a time when, like, without any discussion, the woman just says, I'm taking care of this time. Because she wants, she also wants, she doesn't feel, want to feel, a lot of people also don't, don't want to feel in debt. Yeah. They want to feel that they're participating. And it's fine. But not all women are like that. Not all. And, yeah, you don't expect the woman to open the door. But the woman is expected to, like, she is going to give you other things that maybe you're not going to give her in a different way, in a different manner. Yeah. Yeah. So why, so if there's a, I mean, we don't have to get too hung up on this, like paying for dinner thing, but I think it's a, it was like this kind of like this event in my, in my life. It's like, I'm trying to like analyze what, what's going on. So like, do you think that like maybe the, the woman that like kind of expects her dinner to always be taking like the guy to always take care of everything do you think it has to do with like no. dad stuff or from childhood no. or no I, I don't think it has to do with that always that a woman has to expect that the guy should pay for everything i think that is we're not in those times anymore that the woman expects now we're in different times but if a woman does that it probably works not not that stuff probably it's that's probably how it goes in her family as simple as that. That's what they taught her. That the guy pays for the meal. No? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I was just like, as I'm like going forward and seeing like what, what it is that I attract and like these different patterns and they're not all the same, but there's like some recurring themes that I, I can kind of see. And like, if I'm like, you know, like I'm, I get like concert tickets, I usually want to get the best tickets. So if, if I want to go to a concert ticket, go to a concert, and I want like the front row or like I just got tickets like the second row. No, I've paid like $300 for concert tickets. I don't expect you to say, okay, now you owe me $150. It's like, I want to go to this concert. I'm not expecting you. are inviting me. her. Yeah. You're inviting I'm not her to the concert. What's Who's that? inviting who? You're inviting her to the concert or she's inviting you to the concert. Yeah. Yeah. So who wants if, to go to the concert? Yeah. So if I'm the one that's wanting to go, I... And the, these tickets are like a, you know, really expensive. I don't expect her to like cough up $150 for a concert that I'm really the one that wants to go to, whether she likes it or not. But so, um, oh, I forgot what I was going where I was going with that. Like, <laughs> you so, to pay for half of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't expect that, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. I guess it would just be nice if after a time then they would feel like some kind of need to re to re reciprocate. And I just wonder, like with the, the cases I was talking about where the, uh, the friend of mine who we did see each other for a while, like she has this reaction, like it was kind of just surprising to me. <clears throat> but then I, I, cause there's been a couple times where I felt like, okay, I'm just one of a bunch of guys that is doing stuff for her. Oh. You know, like that's that's what I and and that's happened uh, twice, and so it's like oh, it's not just me taking her to concerts, it's that guy and that guy. Oh, it's not just me uh, taking her do, doing these things. It's that guy and that guy, and then there's this guy, and the, so it's like there's this like I don't want to be one of just this whole 
bunch of dudes that's that does stuff for her exactly so you so you say what do i want to do with that do i mm -hmm. want to continue this way being one of the other guys or because i like her or I, i'm not willing to be in that relationship you're not going to be able to change her she's going to be continue unless she wants to if she wants to change she's going to not she's not going to change unless she wants to the one that has to work on herself is you not her that's what, that's exactly that, that's exactly one of the most ish, the biggest issues in our lives is that we keep going on and uh, that's what I was telling you why am I attracting these toxic relationships I was telling you before I'm not instead of saying oh these people what are these they're doing harm to me they're saying this and this and this yes I can put the blame on them but actually I'm the one that's attracting them what do I have to do and why do I feel feel that this is unfair why do you feel it's unfair that it's that she's going out with other guys while going out with you if she's she was honest with it was or wasn't she honest about that uh it was more like they were friends okay like she just has a bunch of guy friends but then but just like knowing how a lot of guys work and even though i might not like to admit it i might be doing the same thing expecting she's something not to happen. It from you she, she never hid it from you she never hid yeah. that from you. She's not pretending that that she doesn't have other guy friends that take her out and this and that, just like you, no? Yeah, uh, uh, well, I'm kind of like talking about a, a couple different cases, but in one of them, yeah, sort of kind of, there was a little bit of uh, deceit going on, but not, so it's like uh, kind of yes and, and kind of no. And then it's like okay. stuff that kind of like surfaces over time. Like, oh, I now I get it. There's... So it's like she's just in the uh, this pattern of like it's just normal for guys to do stuff for her. And it's just like so you know it's like okay I don't want to be part of that pattern anymore I'm going to just like say tell her that and then whatever happens happens because I can't just go along with that sort of thing. Exactly. If you're not willing to go on with that, you just have to be willing to cut the risks. Let it yeah. go. And like yeah. so, so if I was like coming to your uh, practice and seeing you as a, uh, in a in a clinical setting, then and you hear me say that kind of stuff, like what what's the process of uh, like like biodynamic psychotherapy that like like so where would you start with that? Because you'd be thinking, man, this why is this guy like? I'm just well, curious, like what you here. see is. I what sense I'm a doing. lot of anger towards the the woman. I would work. I would. We would work on that issue, letting you feel that anger that you have of the unfairness, and that's not fear. It's not fear. It's not fear. <laughs> you have to connect to that anger, and I would help. I hope you. I actually feel that anger. Then we would have to work and do some <laughs> body work and releasing all that anger work, and then comes acceptance that, well. You can't control other people, but you could control and realize that really that all that anger is to yourself, that you're the one that are, is putting yourself in those situations, or you're the one that is those ideas in your head that are creating that inner conflict, you know, that you have, you, you don't know how many times you just like, I was listening to you and you were like saying, I believe that the man has to pay the first few bills and I believe in a monogamous relationship and I have believe and I'm, and I'm listening to you and I see I'm listening and I'm, I'm listening and I'm, I'm listening and I see you have so much ideas of what how how you're supposed to be hmm. those are ideas it's not really it's not your truth but you're like if not, you wouldn't even speak. It. You would not even like speak about it. I believe in a, that it has to be in a man English relationship. I've never cheated. I, like you're like justifying yourself, but it's not. I'm not that. Not because it's wrong what you're saying, but it's because it's really coming from an idea in your head, and you're not actually feeling it. So I would ha actually help you see that <laughs> in a more loving manner. Because I don't know if this is the way telling the person in 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 the in the clinic. You're not be able to tell the person directly their thing they have to get to their own realization and they have to see that for themselves so it could be really the true change if you want a person but like that would take a whole long process be able to be able to realize that that that's your truth that's really the ideas in your head that are 
conflicting you and putting you in a little box. It's not like once you really connect to your true source, you don't you stop seeing the world in such a judgmental manner. I feel I feel like you you see so with so you have a lot of inner judgments. That's what it is. <sighs> sorry. I think <laughs> no, don't be sorry. I th I think you're you're really good. That's I think you're I think you're really uh, correct. Like that's that's very insightful, and you can feel free to like yeah. I know like thousands and thousands of people are going to be hearing this, but it's just reality. And, and I don't, I don't mind. Like I've put out like a lot of very personal stuff. It's like, whatever you can see, then I'm, I'm perfectly cool with you saying like, whatever you want. I, I don't want you to like try to like censor yourself or anything oh. like that. And, and so what you just did there, I thought was, was really cool. And it does make sense because I do try to hold myself to this uh, ideal ideal and, guy that you have to be this way, certain way. Exactly. And that's not even, that's exactly, exactly what, when you're not flowing, when you're not letting yourself be. Guess what? If you break off all those little ideas and you start with all those voices in your head that are not even yours, they're like ideas. And this, you should be like this. And you have to open the door. And you have to do this. And, and the woman should pay and that pay or this. Like, it's like so much what the way it's supposed to be. If you would actually be in a natural flow, in a natural flow state, you would not see the things that, that hard or that you would be like much more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fascinating. More, what? I said that that's really good. I, I think you're 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 right on. I've, I I don't think I can argue any of that. And like so, for instance, um, like I was just thinking, like I've been doing martial arts for like most of my life, and I I was thinking recently about uh, quitting and just learning to dance instead because I'm not anywhere close to a, a, a dancer. And uh, like in martial arts, I'm just kind of like, I'm sick of getting beat up. I'm sick of having injuries. My toes messed up. My knee just healed after it's been messed up for a year. I had a rib. And then there, what's up? Your knee? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, right or left? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you want to break that down too. Very, very, very hard on yourself. Your body tells you that, even if it's an accident, even, yeah. Very rigid. Martial arts is very, 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 very good. I wouldn't recommend you to like leave it completely because it does give you a certain um, discipline and alignment, especially it's like when martial arts is one of the, like the few exercises that actually, I don't know if you like the, it actually aligns with your whole energy. But when you do it from such a hard, rigid manner, like so it, it, it's like i don't know how to say it in english it gives you it bounces back that's how i'm trying to say but why don't you try dancing and letting it go and doing martial arts too i do yoga and i dance completely different you have to uh find your you have to find your opposites and you have to find your space where you can relax and flow but without letting go of that certain discipline of this consistency you know you have to it's good but if you're like really you're destroying yourself and you're like your knee and this and that and your body's telling you guess what this is not working for me anymore you have to also respect your body so you yeah. should actually you should actually maybe take a break from it for a while it doesn't mean forever but yeah it's been like um so like I was thinking about like, like capoeira, which I don't know if you know what capoeira is, but it's no. like kind of like a, it's a, a like Afro Brazilian martial art. It's like, it's kind of like dancing because the slaves were not allowed to practice martial arts. So it looked like they were dancing, but really they were doing kicks and punches and stuff, but it's like disguised in this. It's, it's, it's really a, a beautiful thing. Um, as a martial art, like it's, I wouldn't say it's like super effective, like self-defense. Like if someone's learning self-defense, I wouldn't say go learn, go learn capoeira. But, but anyways, I, it aligns that? your energy. It aligns the martial arts. It's not only, it's not only for self-defense. It's for uh, aligning all your energy. That's what it's like. One of the main reasons is no connecting to your core. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. And so part of it, I like, uh, like jujitsu is my main thing. So I, I like, you know, like uh, 
grappling with somebody, someone like big and strong and, and uh, having like tough matches and, um, you know, I, I like to win, but even if I lose, if I lose against somebody that's better than me, that's okay. That's just the way martial arts is. You get beat up. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's, it's just, it's reality. And then, but I start like getting like all these, like so many like little injuries building up. And then, so I was thinking, okay, like, well, dancing, like, so I could like loosen up, not like loosen up, like, kind of like what you were saying, not like loosen up, like, oh, I need to have more flexibility kind of thing, but more like, because when, even from the, the time I was, um, and it may be like part of it, but so my, my daughter was born, uh, like two months before I turned 19. So I was still 18. And so when I was, uh, 18 or 18 or 19, I was, um, uh, I was working at this place and it, it's kind of like a, a FedEx or UPS kind of like that, but like a really small one. So like unloading trucks and loading trucks. And so I had, like, I had this like responsibility now of a, a daughter coming and I was, I was a kid just months ago, you know, and so now I got to be this, an, an adult and the owner of the business was talking to me and he's like, you're too serious. He's like, that's not good. And this is like the owner of the business telling me, you know, like where other people might be like, you need to quit goofing off, you know, like, what are you doing? He's telling me like, you're too serious. And uh, like a, a girlfriend that I met at a yoga class, she was a yoga teacher, but while well, she was, we were just taking this uh, class at the same time. And before we started dating, her dad came to the class and I was there. And so we started dating. And so she was telling her dad about me and she described me as the guy in yoga class that was really serious. <laughs> and it's like, so I'm thinking, okay, like maybe I need to, do, I, I need to just like, like re release this kind of uh, uh, thing. And, and so now I have two kids. My daughter just turned 21 and my son just turned 18. So I have like one more year of child support. I don't, I don't mind paying child support. I've never tried to get away from it or anything like that. I've always tried to see my kids as much as possible, but it's like, I feel like a, a bit of relief coming. Cause it's like, since I've been 18. You're I, just I, getting back to your, to your teenage years right now. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like, okay, I'm a teenager. Okay. An adult, but you really never finished living as a teenager. So right now you're all of a sudden, bam, you're going to be free again. And you're going to start living. You're, you're, you have that need that, that need to, to go dance and move and this and that. It's a need that you didn't never, you, I was saying, we get frozen in those timelines. You need, you have to finish living your teenage years because you never really, lived it because you were too responsible so right now guess what go ahead be a teenager big deal yeah go dance <laughs> yeah i'll probably feel do, do funny facial expressions to do ex <laughs> one second one second <laughs> exactly you have, to, you have to do all your facial expressions to relax that's one of the <laughs> with my students when i make them classes i'm like you have to make funny faces and they're all like <laughs> we have to relax our facial expressions one second one second one second okay hit pause okay we're back on yeah. um so i noticed um like when uh, you asked me like right knee or left knee and I i've read a little bit about this before I I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you're gonna say but like what's the significance of the side of the injury and the um what joint or whatever well it has to do a lot with masculine energy feminine energy it has to do the knee is connected well depends depends in depends in each person it has to do a lot with the heart but in your case i would say that it's a way of okay Okay, well, I, well, I, this is what I'm getting. That life is pushing you to go forward in something because it's like the right knee. And that's why you hurt your knee. Like, you're, you, like a step that you haven't been 
like life is trying to move you like to take a step in a different di direction so that's what i got it could have been, it could also be well it could also be like feeling your heart broken or something like that but that's i got more <laughs> i got more the taking the step in life changing directions interesting to say the, the heart that's the heart chakra behind me heart chakra lotus yeah. and the um I'm getting t-shirts made for the podcast and the, I'm not have, I don't have like an, I mean the logo for the podcast, you've probably seen it. It just says the name and it has the green and the green is for the heart chakra uh, on most of it, it's like a neon green, but that's just so it sticks out like on iTunes and everything. But I'm getting t-shirts made and the first ones are heart chakra. Like with the, so it's interesting that you, uh, say that that's I have to do well yeah we also we also we usually look for what we most need no so like if you're focusing now right now on the heart chakras because you need to focus that in yourself it's mm -hmm. funny because also this um, I give I give some classes I give classes of sometimes like these types of courses no so I give this classes of I go with all, within all the energy centers I connect them with the tree of life and I connect them with the uh, chakras, showing them where it connects each one. And each week we focus on a different set energy center. And right now on Monday, I'm going to give the one, oh, well, it's tomorrow. But this week I'm starting with the, also the heart chakra. <laughs> so it's like, I, w I was thinking right now, I was like preparing the whole class and everything. So it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. So what, you were talking about the, the meditation. What kind of meditation are you talking about? Like, can you describe the, the technique that you recommend? Well, I give a lot of different techniques of meditations, also like breathing, mindfulness, emptying the mind, focusing on one, one thing only, sometimes like on a certain letter. But most of the, uh, the, the meditations, I, how do I say this? Okay. I channel, I channel the words. I don't prepare them so much. I just, I give guided med meditations. I don't write them down. I just know the subject and I just, I connect to a higher source and I let myself the words come as they come. And while I'm, I'm guiding the meditation, I also, I'm also moving the energy in the group and everybody's moving their own. So it's like amazing. So that's the type of meditations I usually give as a teacher. But um, when I meditate myself, I do the same thing, but for myself, I just connect and I empty out my mind and I connect to a higher source and I let myself go within and explore my, we'll explore within what, what comes up, what comes up. That's exactly what I, I try to do. Yeah. What do you think of like, Zen meditation? Because I don't meditate like real regularly any th these days, but I learned, I started Zen meditation at my jujitsu class. So, and uh, like the microcosmic orbit. And um, so I learned that from my jujitsu teacher. He's, he's from Korea. He's been teaching here since 1967. He's like 70 something like, or I don't know how old. But so I, I like learned this way and I know that it, that it works and, and how to use the microcosmic orbit for uh, different reasons, even like sexual vitality stuff. But, but it, it's also like this, um, like rigid, it's a rigid posture, but it's easy to keep good posture. Like, so would you recommend like, like you see, like in my case, like you, you you're seeing, a lot of rigidity, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, so would you say like more rigid meditation is, is probably not the way or does it really matter if you're, if you're in like Zen posture? Or... I think it is good to, when you're meditating to be in a very rigid posture, posture because, because I feel like when you're, when you're like sitting straight and your back is like aligned, that's when the energy flow the right way. If you're like lying down and all, it gets it might get stuck the energy and maybe it doesn't have the same effect. 
being rigid is not always bad. It's also, instead of calling it rigid, we call it discipline. It's not mm. bad. It's not bad to be disciplined. It has its pros, but it has its cons. That's why we have to learn. And once we do make it, if you make it conscious, you can say, okay, when I'm meditating, I have this rigid posture, but I won't let my mind be rigid. Mm. You get it? Because if what, what's going to happen is when you're trying to only control your mind and you don't let go, you don't enter deeply in your meditation. So it doesn't go in within your whole body. You, you don't. You can you can open up much more to greater to greater layers if you let your really your mind open up. But there's a lot of techniques. A lot of people think that meditating is. I have to see this specifically. That's why we always say in the meditation, if there there's another thing that comes up, we just observe it and we let it go. That means it's not supposed to be hard. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be hard on yourself in the meditation because if you're hard on yourself in the meditation, you're not getting the effect you're supposed to, you're wanting to get. No, it's yeah. just going to be another thing you're, in your life that you're being hard on yourself on. But it's discipline, mm -hmm. good. Rigidity, bad. That's, that's exactly, you just have to learn how to realize you feel it in your body when you're being hard on yourself. And you feel in your body when, when, you, when you're, you're being disciplined. It feels so different. It feels so different. That's what I'm saying. You have to respect your body. If you felt so fractured and you this and that, that's not, that's not, that's not discipline anymore. That's being pushing yourself too hard. No? Yeah. Yeah. You make sense. Uh, so how do you see the, the chakras? You talked about the energy centers and I guess I started yoga about like 25 years ago and um, not, ne not necessarily the like go to the class and up dog, down dog, warrior two kinds of stuff, but more like a Krishna consciousness is, is how I got introduced to it. And more like, a, like bhakti yoga, karma yoga, uh, these type of things. And then like when I actually went to a yoga class, I was like, wait, what? like what's this guy it's like yeah. okay that's yoga too but it seems like a lot of people are uh, yeah it's in style now <laughs> they forget they forget the they forget the purpose a lot of people now see yoga just like another exercise method but it's really if we, it depends on each one of us if we really want it to be something much more but you can't whatever the other people do well good for them but if you really want to do it because you want to connect with yourself once you're connecting with your breath and while being in a certain position or this and that, that's only something that you could give for yourself. Not even the teacher could give it for you, uh, can make you go there. Only you could go there. So yeah, I do feel like a lot of people nowadays, like there's a lot of yogis that are like, it's just because it's in style. And there's a lot of people that's not true that they're really, really connected. So we can't like really generalize. It's, it's Depends on each and one of us if we, if we really want to go there. No? Yeah, I can be, um, might be hard for you to believe, but I can be pretty, pretty tough on, on yoga also. And just like the way I see, see it done or the way that I think I need to do it. And to me, it doesn't have like hardly anything to do with those postures. It's like, it's, it's almost like weird that they've like labeled that and that's how they package it. But, uh, what was it? Oh, the, the chakras is what I was going to ask about. So it's like my direct experience of them is like a different than what I typically would read about in the books. Most of the books are the same and they're written like they're just basically copied from other books. And so like I saw the Sahasrara in a, in like a dream state. Like I wasn't really asleep, but I wasn't really awake and, and I, I could see it. And it was, it only happened one time but it was very in interesting and uh, it looked almost like a brain kind of, but it was like, like purplish greenish, like kind of different colors. And it, it didn't stay the same color at, for like uh, even a split second. It was constantly changing uh, colors and like effort, um, like luminescent kind of thing going on. It was really strange, but then like working down, I can't say that I've actually seen them. Like, like I saw the Sahasrara, but then I, I just kind of like wonder, okay, is it like a, um, like some like, uh, 
models of it are like, okay, we go through this in different stages of our life. So when we're like uh, from a baby to like 10 years old, it's the first chakra. And then from like 10 to 17, it's the second chakra. And then it goes up and up and up. And then you get to be uh, older and then you get up in six and seven as you get um, uh, uh, 70 years old or whatever. Or like they're like these like psychological concepts or like, so when you're like working with them or describing them, how do you see them or teach them or, or do you, can you actually like see them or feel them yourself? Like what's it, what are, what are they to you? I guess is my question. Well, I just think they're energy centers that they receive and they let go. They, they receive energy and they take out energy. They're channels really. Um, I feel like a lot of people just focus on one certain chakra that really, 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 we're not supposed to only focus on one or the other. And so many people are just focusing on the third eye and the heart and it's not true or it's, it has to be all because if there's, if we don't focus on all of them, it's not, we don't get exactly what we, re those, if you want really illumination, if you want to really see that and really experience that whole ascension process you have to really work on each and every one of them i believe that there's certain times in our lives that we are working on a certain that we are living through a certain energy on each one of our chakras but i don't think there's a law it's just that that's like like i could tell you yes it's a b and c it's not true i think every person has such a different experience and every person can have such a different uh, like they, you said that you saw it like a brain, like this and that. That's your subconscious mind inter making that interpretation, so you can understand how it is. But that's your that's your image, so so you can understand for you what it is. Maybe for me it doesn't make sense like that because maybe I see it like so different. Doesn't but the thing is the way you see it or the way I see it. The point is that our subconscious mind makes us feel and see it the same way, whatever it is. So if you see a certain color, it's okay. It makes sense to you. I can see a different color. It doesn't matter what color it is, like by the like what you just said, by the book, red, orange. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's just the point is that we wanted to have it healthy and working for us. So it doesn't matter if I say what you're saying is okay, as long as it for you, for you, it's it's like your truth. It's your interpretation for what you feel. We, our whole life, we're supposed to, what we're supposed to be doing is connecting each and every one of them. We're supposed to connect them. Hold on a second. Okay. Got disconnected. One second. We're supposed to be, see, I'm talking about connection and it got disconnected. <laughs> no coincidence. Um, yeah. That's what, that's our whole job in life. We're supposed to be continually be connecting because if you, you want to really be a successful person in life and you want to be aligned and you want to be connected to yourself. You have to be connected. That's, that's the whole, that's for me, the chakras, the way I work with them, I feel them with my hands when I'm working and when I'm doing a healing, I do get images usually, but let's, I do get images. I do feel I, I there's a lot of ways to develop our sensibility. We all have, we all have that psychic, Everybody, whoever said, oh, um, guess what? I'm psychic. I was born with this gift. Oh my gosh, I'm so spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've seen so many people acting like that. And I'm like, come on, we all are. We're all human beings. We're all living in the human experiences. It's just that if we want to develop it or not, or we're aware of it or not. So some people feel more, some people see more, some people hear, some people smell. We all have psychic abilities. And all that people that try to put themselves above other people by saying, I'm psychic. Guess what? So are you. So am I. We're all psychic. We could all feel if we're connected with ourselves. You connect. That's what I'm trying to say. That you connected to your, to your, you were connected to your source and you were able to see that image. That's your psychic, that's your psychic development and telling you what it is. And maybe I can see it in a different way, but it has the same message. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But yeah, then we start developing much more senses. Now then we start smelling. The more you work with energy, you start after feeling and smelling and seeing and hearing. And sometimes you, it depends also on the patient. 
depends who am I working on. It's like funny, like I could be working with a patient and I get so many images and there's, I'm working with another patient and I feel a lot. Cause also we're like working with my energy field with their energy field. So it's like every, 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 it becomes a different mixture with every, <laughs> with every person. It's never the same. It's never the same. That's what I'm trying to say. It's never the same the way we interpret or we feel the things. So I just think that all we're supposed to focus on is instead of going to the whole idea of the brain and this and that, just guess what? Let's focus on healing and cleaning our life. Yes, in the energetic level, but also taking the actions we're needed because we are on this earth. We do have to take these actions. So like I could be telling you, yes, you're supposed to work on your heart chakra, feel the pain, yes and that. But you're also supposed to do the actions of self-love. You're also supposed to bring it down to earth bring it down because and the meditation is so powerful and gives us such a great ability to be able to see but after all seeing we're supposed to bring it down to earth bring it the root root it ground it and bring it to your actions as long as we're on in this body and on this planet hmm. yeah i think you're really good I'm, I'm i'm pretty impressed really how did you get, get into all of this? Like, what was your, was there some kind of event or was this how you were since you were a little kid or? Well, I was always sensitive, but I used to be like, like that little, <laughs> that, like that little girl that was always afraid of the dark because I could see things. <laughs> and nobody like, like, it was like, I used to, yeah, it was like that little girl that has imaginary friends. Hmm. That you never, you never really tell anybody about these things because you think that what is, what's going on after, after now I appreciate it because I realized that that's part of, that was part of my development. It's like, I was always open to all this. I, I remember in class, I used to be the girl that instead of listening to the teacher, what she was saying, I used to be looking at her aura. Like seeing the light around the head, I, I, I and then also I would see how it got bigger and then smaller and the way she was talking, and it was like always interested in this. But then obviously later on I blocked it because you have to. That's not real. You have to continue on in life. Then about a few years, it was like, what was it? Yeah. Then after all, when I got into that, it was again. Um. Well. A lot of people we get into this because of crisis, <laughs> emotional crisis. I was dealing through emotionally. I was felt like I couldn't carry on anymore. Like I was living a life. I felt like a robot. Like I was just. I felt like completely disconnected from myself. I started having panic attacks, and I started getting so much. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. So then I remember one day, I was always spiritual. One day I went up, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I went, I went for a walk to the garden, to this and that. And I started crying and opening up my heart and saying, I need to find my purpose in life. I need to find my purpose in life. A week later, I was introduced to my teacher of my energy healer. And in that moment, I knew that that was like such a divine connection because it was like that moment exactly that I needed that. And from then, it was like amazing because right at, for, for the first time in my life, I understood what was astral project, projection. I didn't, before, I, I, I used to be afraid to go to sleep because I was afraid to start floating on top of my body because I thought I was dying. I don't know when explained to me anything of these things. And I was already, I was already, I always was already moving a lot of energy in, the, in those times. So it was, it was fun because after, instead of being fearful of all these, all, all, the, all the sensitivity, I became to, I became to know it and that empowerment of like, instead of fearing it, it's your power. So that's how I, and then after that, it just, one thing led to another and to another and to another. And it just opened up, like, it was just always open. I just did the connection. So I'm very grateful for this whole path because it worked in me. <laughs> if I wouldn't have felt it myself in my, whole, in my own life, like the way it changed my life so strongly, I wouldn't believe so much in this and I wouldn't want to work in this and I wouldn't want to help people the same way because it's something I lived so strongly through myself that 
I know, well, that was my way. Obviously, there's a lot of people that have different ways, but the people who want to come with me and want to know which I can lead the way because I went through it. I know the way. So that's, that's exactly, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's my that's, Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, I've had, like, ex, I guess you could say different experiences from the time I was a really little kid also. And uh, so it's like, I've always been kind of fascinated with this like spiritual path and like what's real. Cause I, I there's, uh, you know, we can like, yeah, I guess just like, you know, what's, what's real. So it's like, even like the chakra stuff and I'm reading these books over the last 20 some years about it. And like, okay, what, which one's real? It's like some people were saying different stuff and like these like psychic things that happen and like my own experiences. And so it's, it's really interesting. And then, but then sometimes like you meet somebody and then it's like, okay, like, like my jujitsu teacher was like one of the ones that, that really like blew my mind because I, you know, that's where I started learning like meditation. That was when I was 18 years old. So it was like 1997 when I started there. And uh, I would have like this question, like, okay, I'm going to ask him about this. And then we'd be at class and then he would answer my question, but I didn't even ask him. He would just like look at, he, look at me and just answer whatever the question I had in my mind that might have been something kind of obscure, but he was just like, okay, that was real. And it didn't just happen once or twice. It was kind of a regular thing. And then my mom is pretty intuitive and I've had like all these experiences, but it's, but sometimes you, you meet somebody and like sometimes I think like what you were talking about before, like people that are saying like, Oh, I'm so spiritual and all this. It's almost like they're a, a caricature of oh, come on. the the spiritual thing. But uh, like, like when like what you're doing, I, I think it's I, I I believe what you're saying because you, you seem to be like dead on about this kind of stuff, and not to like put down what other people are doing because even if they're doing yoga that's different than mine, it's still like I'm not saying it's wrong because like whatever path they're on is the path that they're on. So, but um, I, f I forget what I was going with there. But um, so do you? Uh, we can like. I'm not in any hurry or anything, but we can start to like wrap it up if you want. Did you um, have anything else that you're wanting to get into? Cause I, I could talk to you about this stuff for forever, but. Me too, me too. Yeah. I'm just trying to say that everybody has their path, their own way, their own way of connecting. And everybody also has their own time, their own timing. When I first got all into this, I was trying to impose it on people like saying, wow, Oh my gosh, this is so the way, and this is, and then you learn how to respect that. Also, not everybody's willing to awake, and it's just what it's not in their charts. It's fine; they don't have to work on this in their this lifetime, and it's fine. So, what I'm trying to say is like, yeah, a lot of people want to do yoga to connect spiritually. It's fine if, a lot, if another person wants to do it to do exercise. It's fine. And like you were saying about the books, that there's so many different interpretations of the chakras and all that, and which one's right and which one's wrong. I believe that they're all probably correct for the person who wrote it. Mm. And if, if, if there's something that sticks with you, keep it. And there's, there's something that doesn't belong to you and you say, you know what? I don't feel this. Let it go. You don't have to like fight with the whole book. You just have to learn how to choose. Choose what is for you, what is not for you. You have to learn how to be selective. And that's the only way we could be that is when we're like really connected to ourselves. And that way, when you really connect to yourself, that's when you could say, okay, this is for me. This is not for me. And it's fine. I don't have to get mad at the person, at the author, at whatever. You just, you receive what you're supposed to receive and you let go what you're not supposed to let go. And also, yeah, we stop, we stop trying to impose our ideas on other people too, because that's what it is. When, once you're connected to yourself and you're connected to your own path, that's what happens. Like you start realizing, guess what? Everybody has their own path and I'll respect that too because I, I respect my own path. You get yeah. it? Yeah, that makes sense to me. And um, I've been uh, 
thinking even more about that kind of thing lately. And like I, as a, so I'm certified through strong first as a kettlebell instructor and like all the strong first shirts are black. And then you can like look at a bunch of strong first instructors and most of them look the same. They look a lot like me. If I'm standing there in my black strong first shirt and the, all the other dudes are standing there in their strong first shirts, it, it looks like we're all like brothers and cousins and stuff. It looks like the same, same guy almost. And, Copy paste. Yeah. And, so, and all the shirts are black and they're, if everything's black and gray. It's a really good certification. I'm not trying to say anything bad about the certification, but I'm letting that certification go and just doing my own thing for strength conditioning. I've been developing my own system for years and years. But so I'm getting uh, shirts made for the podcast. And I don't know if I was, maybe I was just talking about this earlier. I don't think I mentioned it with you, but I'm getting fitness and consciousness shirts made. It's going to have the, and uh, I'm having a friend of mine make them. So if people want one, like theirs is going to end up being a little bit different. Because each one is going to be like handmade. So even though people can have, a, it'll be a fitness and consciousness, consciousness shirt, but no two of them are the same. They're all going to be their own thing. Because I don't, I'm not trying to like, through, whether it's through my, uh, as a personal trainer, strength conditioning stuff, I'm not trying to get people to be like me. I'm trying to like show other people their strength and for them to like get their, their own way. And so even if they want my shirt, it's going to be unique to them because no two will be the same. Just like nobody's fitness and consciousness is going to be the same thing. Nobody has the exact same body. Nobody has the same exact consciousness. Exactly. My point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, it's a um, very interesting thing. So do you do anything, do you do like online classes or do you do, or is everything that like you do, is it all in person or? I, I've done everything in person. Right now I'm developing, a, I'm trying to develop, I'm, I'm still very green, developing, like trying to develop a system of trying to bring it online more of all this without, without trying to lose this organic nature, no, not commercialize everything but um we'll see i'm trying I'm, that, that's that's the plan to try to start expanding yeah so what if somebody wants to work with you just like a one-on-one -on -one thing that can they do so over like skype or like what we're using now is zoom can no they, yeah, yeah definitely 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 i do do healings i do do healing by phone i could do that and yeah i work by by phone the thing is the classes i was trying to develop the classes and that's like such a different story mm -hmm. but on one-on-one -on -one, it's so easy yeah this is like how can people get a hold of you with my number my instagram because send me a message to my to my instagram and i'll, I'll answer them back and okay I'll, yeah i'll leave your well, I'll leave yeah. your um, Instagram. I'll uh, post this on Instagram and on Facebook so people can figure it out. Well, um, like I said, I'm not in any hurry, but if you want to talk about anything else, I'm, I'm open to it or we can wrap it up if you want. Yeah, we can wrap it up. I think that's like so many ideas. Like, I like to close, like to just like, I, I like not leaving everything up in the air because I think like so important to like start connecting what everything we spoke about it, how could we connect everything and like in a way of bringing it together, bringing it down. So like, what would you say in a few words, what, 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 what were you left with? What, what, how was your experience of listening and talk and talking about this and everything that we spoke about? Tell me, tell me. <laughs> Uh, how to bring this down like instead of leaving it all up in the air yeah i spoke about this and this and this and this like how would we bring it down to our life and how would we apply in our life or everything we spoke about right now well i think i'll probably go with like what you what you said like what we were talking about like with the martial arts like not quit it completely but 
uh, and then like doing something to like, like loosen up more and try to be less like rigid and I'm going to go back and, and re-listen to it and everything. <laughs> but I, it's like, that's what I've, it was like kind of encouraging because like some of the stuff I've, you know, I've been thinking about before, but it, it's interesting when somebody, you know, this is the first time we've actually spoken, but you're able to just like, just dial right in and, and get to it. You can see right through everything that I'm talking about and, and get, and get right to the heart of the matter, but you know, like heart stuff. And, and, uh, so, um, it was cool to have you as the the hundredth episode. This is episode 100 and there are like, so people are like looking for it. there. There's not quite, a, there's like 97 available now. So I, I deleted three for various reasons, but this is episode 100. And uh, so it was cool to have this be the hundredth episode, but I think that's a good thing for, so when I talk about like the personal stuff, so I think a lot of people can identify with the personal stuff and instead of talking about just like generalities, it's like, this is what I have going on. This is talking about my, my ex-girlfriend and this other girl I was seeing like this is, and I'm not like hooking up with tons of girls by any means, not, not even close. Like, this is me. This is real. Again, 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 the idea. <laughs> the, yeah. The idea is this is my rigid. Okay. And what, what if you do hook up with a bunch of girls? No judgment. Just let it go. Let it go. <laughs> you don't have to defend yourself. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I'm gonna <laughs> go back and and look through that. But I think it's cool for people to see, because then they can identify more when people are just like open and honest, and uh, people can I, I identify with it. So I'm. I hope you liked how it went, and yeah. hope you. Um, I, I'd love to have you on again, and talk about like more of the same or something different or wh whatever, whatever you want to talk about. And like, if you start launching more online stuff, if you want to come on and promote it, you have a, you have an open invitation to, um, thank you, thank whatever you want. Thank, thank so, you for you having it. me. Thank you. It was like very nice. Also, I learned a lot also listening Good. to all this. It's always good to listen to yourself also speak <laughs> it's always the, i think it's one of the best ways it's like a mirror no yeah. always listen and see and catch ourselves where where are our blind spots so. yeah yeah very cool any uh final thoughts to leave everyone with no i just think be you flow connect to your own honor your inner rhythm <laughs> exactly right what mm -hmm. we were saying in the beginning yeah. That's exactly it. You're, everybody has their own path, their own way. Not what works for the other person is necessarily going to work for you. But connect to you to know what's working for you. That's like that's the main thing that we're supposed to do in life. So. Yes. Well, very cool. Well, thank you for being on. That I think that worked out really well. I'm glad you're the 100th episode. And I will, um, I'll stop the recording and I'll talk to you for just a second after we stop. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you.